Hi, welcome to Naresh ID. This is Kishore, and today we are going to continue the templates concept. In last session, we have discussed uh, templates are generics. Templates are generics are very much useful in creation of a uh, one function for or one class for several functions or several <coughs> class definitions. Okay, they are very much useful in creation of family of functions, a family of functions are classes. Okay. Now, in last class or in last session, we have discussed uh, how to create a function template, which is also called generic function. Okay. Now, I am going to give how to pass two different types of arguments to the templates. In this example, I am going to explain how to pass two different types of uh, arguments. Okay. In last session, what we have discussed? Uh, how to pass to integers or how to pass to floats means same type of data, but when the data is different, how to pass different types of arguments to the same function. Okay. Now, watch it, I am going to explain how to pass. First of all, common header file. Okay. These are the common header files iostream.h and conio.h. Later, I want to create a function which is going to hold different types of arguments. Then first when it is a generic function or a template function, first of all we should have to start with the template keyword that is why template. Now first of all template, later in angular brackets class keyword, okay. now class also provide, later okay, placeholder, now any type, any name no problem. But here the point is suppose we are passing only one placeholder or we are creating only one placeholder. It is able to store only one type of argument means suppose user is sending integers t is converted into integer floats t converted into float, but uh, my requirement is what different data types then t1 okay, class t1 comma class t2. Now what happened? Suppose user is sending integer float, integer float. Then t1 converted into integer, t2 converted into float. Suppose user is sending float float. Okay. Now t1, t2 both will become floats, and user is sending float integer. Now t1 is converted into float, t2 converted into integer. That means now they are able to store any type of data. Means two different data types are same data types. Next here and uh, now we need a function that is why a function what kind of function suppose I want to find out biggest number. Okay. I want to find out the biggest number or I want to find out the sum of two numbers then what we have to do suppose user is sending integer float now I want to perform the addition integer plus float is what float float plus float also float or float plus integer also float that is why here it is better to go for float return type because of there is a reason for this integer is not able to store floating data but uh, float is able to store integer data okay here the point is integer is not able to store float but float is able to store integer that's why i'm going to return type float next function name for example sum okay float sum now sum is the function name next one arguments required. How many arguments I want to send? Two arguments of different type now that is why here t1, t2. Now t1 x comma t2 y. Now what happened? x becomes t1 type, y becomes t2 type. Suppose integer float you are sending. Now integer is received by t1, float is received by t2. Now x becomes integer, y becomes float like this. Suppose you are sending both integers or both floats. Now x and y both, both will become integer or float no problem at all. Now they are able to store same type or different type also. Next simply return x plus y now brackets closed. Now what happened you are sending some values now, now they are going to be added and the value is going to return. But here the most important thing is what? Suppose you are sending integer float or float integer. Now the answer is float now, that is why return value is float. Okay? And here do not use the 
T1 type or T2 type because of it is depended on the user when it is T1 type okay suppose you are using T1 integer but you are sending float T2 now the answer is problem that is why do not use the integer type just use the float type and do not use the T1 or T2 type. In last program we have used only T type because of there we are sending same type of data types that is why when same type of data types means a return value also at same time that is why there is no obligation but here different data types now to cover that one we are going to use flood okay now it is the template function creation I means function template or generic function creation now how to use this function from main function okay and how to call this function in main function now I am going to start the main program okay here I am going to give main function now it is the main function void main okay now the main function started in main function what we have to do we have to send some arguments okay that is why here I am going to write like this CLR is here now the screen content is clear later I have to send different types or same type no problem at all say this C out int sum equal to okay sum of 10 comma 20 and now what happened it is the function definition and it is the function calling in function calling what we are sending 10 and 20 now x receives the okay 10 value y receives the 20 value 10 plus 20 answer is what 30 30 is going to return that is going to print here that is why integer sum equal to 30 now we are sending what same type of data elements here we are sending same type of data elements now the answer is integer 30 next I want to send floats then C out float sum equal to sum of this time 1.2 comma 2.3 okay and L now what happened here this time I am sending one float and another one also float means both are floats 1.2 2.3 now t1 t2 both will become float values xy also float values return value also float now the answer of this program is what 3.5 okay fine now here we are sending two integer type here we are sending two floating type now i want to send one integer one float then c out int comma float sum equal to sum of phi comma 2.5 and L. Now watch it. Here what I am sending first 5. 5 is what integer type. 2.5 is what float type. Now the 5 is going to T1 and 2.5 T2. Now what happened? T1 is converted into integer, T2 converted into float. Now x is a integer, y is a float. Integer plus float, answer float. Now the answer is what 5 plus 2.5 7.5 answer is ok. Next suppose C out float comma integer sum equal to sum of ok suppose 1.1 comma 2 now brackets close and in the last example what happened 1.1 is the floating data but 2 is a integer data. Now 1.1 is received by T1 that is why T1 converted into float and 2 is received by T2 now it will convert it into integer and float plus integer answer is once again float, float is going to print here answer is what 3.1 okay and now get CH program close. Now in this example what happened okay first time we are sending two integers value and second time we are sending two floating values third time integer float fourth time float integer that means how many functions we have designed here only one function see this here how many function definitions are there only one function definition but in how many ways we have used in four ways that is why it is called generic function already have said in a general store we are having different types of items means one store different kinds of items here also one function in different ways we are going to use 
it is the advantage of using templates. That is why so many definitions are not required only one definition due to this program size is reduced that is why they are called generic functions that is why they are called generics and templates are called generics ok. It is a generic function and templates are called what generics ok. That is why using the templates reduce the program size. When program size is reduced what happens? Performance is increased. It is how to use a different types of argument, how to use send different types of arguments to the functions ok. Thank you, thank you for watching. Thank you.